Welcome back to the second part of our series on the carnivore diet. In the first video, the carnivore diet, why does it work so well? We explored the profound benefits of a meat-only diet and its positive impact on many people's health. In this second installment, we're taking a closer look at the often overlooked side of plant-based foods. Today, we'll examine why vegetables, fruits, seeds, and nuts may not be as beneficial for human health as commonly believed. This discussion will challenge the conventional belief that plants are essential for a healthy diet, and will delve into the mechanisms that explain why they might cause more harm than good for some individuals. We'll also explore the carnivore diet from a practical and scientific standpoint, drawing on real-world experiences from figures like Jordan and Michaela Peterson, as well as Dr. Sean Baker, Dr. Anthony Chaffee, and Dr. Ken Berry, who have extensively studied and promoted this lifestyle. Additionally, we'll take a closer look at the key nutrients that people often worry about when cutting out plant foods, such as vitamins, fiber, and minerals, and examine how the carnivore diet manages to sustain optimal health in these areas with references to research and clinical observations from experts like Dr. Robert Kiltz and Dr. Stephen Hussey. You've likely heard of Jordan Peterson, a renowned professor and psychologist, and his daughter Michaela, both of whom adopted the carnivore diet to manage their health issues. Jordan described his experience. Within a week I was 25% less anxious. Within two weeks I was 75% less anxious, and I've been better every single day. Michaela, who dealt with chronic autoimmune issues and severe depression, found profound improvements with this meat-only diet. Her autoimmune conditions, which included rheumatoid arthritis, began to subside. What's particularly interesting is how both Jordan and Michaela experienced drastic changes after removing vegetables from their diet rather than just processed foods or sugar. Their stories highlight the possibility that certain plant compounds could be exacerbating symptoms for some people. Their experiences are powerful, but they aren't the only ones. Dr. Sean Baker, one of the foremost advocates of the carnivore diet, has been following and promoting it for over seven years. His website, meatheals.com, now part of Carnivore Diet, has documented countless success stories from individuals who have experienced life-changing health improvements. These testimonials highlight transformative results in areas such as depression, gut health, rheumatoid arthritis, and more. Today, there are over 1,000 success stories shared on the platform, demonstrating a wide range of benefits including substantial weight loss, improved mood, and significant improvements in skin health. These accounts emphasize the growing interest in the carnivore diet and the potential need for more scientific research to explore why it appears to work so well for certain individuals. The increasing number of testimonials suggests that this dietary approach is helping people overcome long-standing health challenges that other diets may not have addressed effectively. One of the major reasons the carnivore diet seems to be working is because of the high nutrient density and bioavailability of animal products. Bioavailability refers to how efficiently the body can absorb and utilize nutrients from food. Animal-based nutrients such as iron, B vitamins, and zinc are far more bioavailable than their plant-based counterparts. For instance, heme iron, found in meat, is absorbed by the body at a much higher rate than non-heme iron from plants. As mentioned in The Fat of the Land by Villalmore Stephenson, the Inuit people thrived on an animal-based diet with no apparent signs of deficiencies. Meat is packed with essential nutrients like B vitamins, iron, and zinc, all of which are in highly bioavailable forms, meaning your body can easily absorb and use them. Additionally, creatine, a compound found in red meat, enhances brain function and athletic performance, further contributing to the benefits of this diet. Contrary to what many believe, even vitamins like vitamin C, which are primarily associated with fruits and vegetables, are present in animal foods. According to studies by Birch and Dan in 1953, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and other tissues in meat contain vitamin C. Although in small amounts, your body's reduced need for vitamin C on a low-carb diet makes these trace amounts sufficient. The key here is that without carbohydrates, your body utilizes vitamin C more efficiently, reducing the risk of deficiencies like scurvy. This is because glucose and vitamin C share the same transport pathways, so lowering carbohydrate intake allows your body to use vitamin C more effectively. The critical point here is that animal foods provide not only the necessary macronutrients, protein and fat, but also the micronutrients that are essential for human health. 
Unlike plant-based diets which often require careful planning and supplementation, the carnivore diet provides a one-stop solution to meeting nutrient needs without the worry of poor absorption or nutrient inhibitors. Another concern often raised is the risk of magnesium and potassium deficiency. However, studies have shown that people on low-carb or carnivore diets maintain adequate levels of these nutrients. A paleolithic ketogenic study found that all but one out of 50 participants had adequate magnesium levels without supplementation. Moreover, low glucose levels help improve both magnesium and potassium retention, further supporting the notion that dietary supplementation may not be necessary. When you reduce carbohydrate intake, your body becomes more efficient at managing and utilizing these essential minerals. Interestingly, the absence of fiber in the carnivore diet may actually improve magnesium absorption. Insoluble fiber, which is common in plant foods, binds to minerals like magnesium, making it harder for the body to absorb them. Without this interference, people on the carnivore diet can often maintain healthy levels of these nutrients. Still, if someone experiences muscle cramps or fatigue during the adaptation phase, it's a good idea to monitor these minerals and supplement if needed. This adaptation phase, also known as the carnivore flu, can be challenging for some, but it usually resolves after a few weeks as the body adjusts to burning fat for fuel instead of carbohydrates. Let's talk about fiber. It's a common belief that fiber is essential for good digestion and preventing constipation, but recent studies challenge that idea. Dr. Paul Mason presented a case-controlled study that compared high-fiber, low-fiber, and zero-fiber diets in patients with constipation. The results were striking. Those on a zero-fiber diet had no constipation, while those on high-fiber diets saw worsened symptoms. The theory that humans need large amounts of fiber for proper digestion stems from outdated ideas like auto-intoxication, the belief that constipation leads to poisoning from decomposing waste. This concept, dating back to ancient Egyptian times, influenced medicine for millennia but has largely been debunked by modern gastroenterology. The carnivore diet often results in smaller and less frequent bowel movements because the body absorbs most of what it consumes, producing less waste. In fact, studies now suggest that too much fiber can exacerbate digestive issues like bloating, gas, and constipation. Without the bulk of indigestible fiber, people on the carnivore diet often report smoother digestion and less discomfort. What's important to understand here is that while fiber can be helpful for some people, it's not universally beneficial. And for those with sensitive guts or autoimmune conditions, cutting it out can lead to significant improvements. A common concern with eliminating plant-based foods is the potential impact on the gut microbiome. Many believe that a diverse diet rich in fiber is crucial for maintaining a healthy gut. However, studies on cultures like the Inuit show that even without fiber-rich plant foods, their gut microbiomes were diverse and healthy. While fiber is known to feed certain bacteria in the gut, it's not the only factor that determines gut health. Proteins and fats also play a role in supporting a balanced microbiome. In fact, some studies have shown that high levels of bacteria often promoted by high-fiber diets are linked to inflammation and chronic diseases like arthritis. On the carnivore diet, these bacteria naturally decrease, potentially reducing inflammation and improving overall gut health. What's more, research is still in its infancy when it comes to defining what an ideal gut microbiome looks like. For some, the microbiome may adjust to a meat-only diet, leading to improvements in gut health, as seen in those who resolve digestive issues after adopting the carnivore approach. Another factor in the carnivore diet's success may be the elimination of anti-nutrients found in plant foods. Plants like animals have defense mechanisms to avoid being eaten. These mechanisms often come in the form of anti-nutrients such as oxalates, lectins, and phytates. For example, oxalates, commonly found in foods like spinach, almonds, and beets, can bind with calcium and form kidney stones. For people who are sensitive to oxalates or have conditions like kidney disease reducing or eliminating these compounds can drastically improve their health. Oxalate buildup doesn't just affect the kidneys, it can accumulate in tissues throughout the body potentially leading to joint pain and even thyroid dysfunction. Similarly, phytates, found in grains, legumes and nuts, bind to minerals like zinc, calcium and iron, preventing their absorption. Studies have shown that eating zinc-rich foods like oysters with high phytate foods like beans or corn can significantly reduce the amount of zinc your body absorbs. The carnivore diet eliminates these anti-nutrients, allowing for better absorption of essential minerals. Hormesis plant toxins and the good stress hypothesis. 
Some argue that consuming small amounts of plant toxins can be beneficial, a concept known as hormesis. The idea is that these compounds stress the body in small amounts, triggering adaptations that make you stronger, much like how exercise or fasting can improve resilience. While there is some merit to this theory, the problem lies in the fact that there are thousands of different plant toxins, and we have no idea which ones are beneficial, in what amounts, or for whom. The carnivore diet simplifies things by eliminating these unknowns. Instead of relying on potentially harmful chemicals from plants, you can get your hormesis from other sources like exercise or cold exposure. Finally, one of the biggest reasons people are finding success with the carnivore diet is that it acts as the ultimate elimination diet. By cutting out all processed foods, plant toxins, and potentially inflammatory substances, people give their bodies a chance to reset and heal. For those dealing with chronic issues like autoimmune disorders, digestive problems, or even mental health conditions, removing these triggers can make a world of difference. It's important to note that the carnivore diet offers a unique opportunity to strip away the complexity of modern diets and focus on what works best for your body. The carnivore diet might sound extreme to some, but the results are undeniable for those who've found success with it. Whether it's healing from autoimmune conditions, improving mental health, or just feeling better overall, the testimonials and research suggest that this way of eating has potential benefits worth exploring. If you're curious about the carnivore diet, approach it with an open mind, and most importantly, listen to your body. Whether you decide to go all in or just incorporate some of these ideas into your current diet, understanding the science and stories behind this movement can help guide you toward optimal health. Thanks for watching this second part of our series on the carnivore diet. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with anyone who might benefit from this information. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss out on future videos. We'll be diving even deeper into health, wellness, and diet strategies in upcoming episodes, and you won't want to miss it. Also, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you tried the carnivore diet or are you considering it? Drop a comment below and let's start a conversation. Your feedback and experiences really help build our community and guide the content I create for you. Stay tuned for more exciting topics on health, wellness, and diet transformation. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.